In this video, I'm going to show you how to rank number one in Google for the keyword phrase, how to sprint faster. And I'm going to walk through the exact process I would go through using a real life example. So let's dive right in. Okay, so I'm in the Ahrefs Keyword Explorer and right away we can see that this has a keyword difficulty of four for how to sprint faster. And how to sprint faster has informational intent. And I don't even need to look at the search results to know this. This absolutely will have informational intent. It's gonna be at the top of the funnel. So we're gonna have to build the content based on that, based on knowing that. So a couple things to think about here. When we're looking at keyword difficulty, don't just look at this and think that it's a good keyword to go after because this is one of the biggest mistakes that people will make. They'll see a low KD and they'll think that it's a really good keyword to target. This just isn't true. There's some missing pieces to this puzzle to determine if a keyword is a good to target. And I'll, I'll show you what that is here in a second. But the first thing, this is kind of our preliminary metric we want to look at. And this is just giving us a little insight into a keyword that has potential. Okay, this does not mean we're definitely going to target it, but it's going to give us that potential. Now, going through this, what we want to do is first look at the overall opportunity here. And overall, it looks good. We have low KD. We have good, decent volume here. We have good traffic potential. And then we even have some opportunities to build more topical authority by creating other assets to support this primary asset. Now, what you can do is you can go down here and you can look at the search results and ultimately see what you're up against and you can see the makeup of these results. But I don't recommend just looking here because ultimately this does not really give you a clear picture of what you're really working with until you actually go into Google. You need to go into Google and you need to see what is Google actually showing for this keyword. So let me show you how to do that right now. Okay, so I'm in Google and the first thing I wanna look at is just to see what is Google showing for this keyword. And as you can tell right away that the number one result is actually a featured snippet. So this is just an indication that we have an opportunity to steal this featured snippet from this top ranking result. So this is something we really need to keep in mind and we need to structure the content knowing that there is a featured snippet. And really the goal here is to try to just steal this from the competitor. Now, another thing I wanna look at is without even scrolling down, you're going to see that the number one result here is featured snippet. You could say technically this is position zero, but realistically it's position one. And wiki how is number two. But here's where it gets interesting. We don't even see the third result because it's pushed way down below the fold because we have a video pack. Okay. And this video pack is very, very important to take advantage of. And so if I was a brand who let's say was selling a sprint training program, let's say I had a, a course about how to show you how to sprint faster. Well, what I would do is I wouldn't just want to rank on Google, I would also want to rank in this video pack because then we can capture more SERP real estate. So I would be thinking about, okay, what can we do to rank in Google? But then what can we also do to rank in YouTube as well? So we'll take the same exact keyword. We'll take a look. And usually the results that you see here will align pretty well with what you see in Google, but not always. So if we look at this, it looks like we have outperform, which is a sprinting technique, and then how to sprint faster and then how to run faster. So if we look at this, it looks like like some similar results, but not a hundred percent. So, but regardless, what we would want to do is we would want to rank in Google. We would want to try to rank in this little pack here, but you can really only do that by ranking in YouTube. And then of course we could get traction in YouTube and get visibility in YouTube as well to build our brand. So tons of opportunity here. And if we look at these top performing videos, you know, 1 million views, 500,000 views, 300,000 views, 800, 1.5. So tons of views and tons of view opportunities for this particular keyword. So huge opportunity here on YouTube should not be neglected. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that people make. They get so focused on ranking on Google, but we also have to adapt based on what we see. And Google is showing us that this keyword absolutely has video intent. It doesn't just have intent where people want to go to a web page and read about it. People want to actually watch a video to learn about. It. And that makes sense because looking at images of someone sprinting is not the same as watching someone sprint on a video or watching someone sprint in real life. So it makes perfect sense that this would have video intent. So you have to do both. So knowing that, that's going to kind of change your overall strategy. You need to develop a strategy for building out a really great web page and an informational asset for this. But then you also need to build out a strategy on how you're going to create an awesome video around this topic as well. Now, keep going down here. We're finally at the number three result here. And as you can tell, it pushed way down below the fold. So even if you ranked number three, let's say you did an awesome job, you ranked 
number three, your CTR is going to be very, very low. I guarantee that the CTR, the click through rate on this particular result is very low. And based on most studies, the average CTR is anywhere between 25 to 30% for the number one result. So we can assume that that gets chopped in half going to number two, which brings it down to about 15 or so. And then it gets progressively worse from there. Now, in this case, it's going to be much lower. I would assume CTR on this one is maybe 5% if we're lucky. Okay. Now it gets progressively worse if you go down, but I've seen a lot of SERPs where there's a lot more SERP results. In this case, there actually aren't a ton. So we basically just have a featured snippet. We have a video pack and then everything else is pretty clean. And then some related searches as well. Now, a couple of key things to keep in mind when you're looking at these search results, go back up and you'll see that Google's giving us these additional little search results. And basically this is Google telling us that there is topical relevance on these ideas as well. So when people are searching for how to sprint faster, they're likely usually searching whatever their ideal sport is. So like if I was a baseball player, I'd want to search how to sprint faster for baseball or for rugby or for football. So getting more granular and, and realistically, the answer is going to be the same pretty much for all of these, but there might be some nuance. So Google is just telling you right away that you need to build out assets for this as well. Okay. That's, you know, Google's not specifically telling us to do that, but we can, we can look at this and know that we need to build more topical authority. Now we're going to go down here and we'll look at related searches. Okay. And there's some other things going on here. We have obviously sprint and sprint training, but then linear acceleration wall drill. Okay. Very specific type of query here, hill sprints, resisted sprint training and split squats. So these are all things that are directly related to our core topic, which means we either need to include these ideas in the content itself or build out separate assets that are specifically about these topics, as long as they're not competing with the pure intent. Okay. And then also some additional related searches down here as well. So these are all things you need to be taking note of when you're building out your strategy, because this isn't just you build out one really great asset for how to sprint faster. You also need to be thinking about, okay, what are the five to 10 other assets we're going to build that are going to support this main asset as well. So this is the value of looking at Google search results. You can't get this same value by looking at Ahrefs or SEMrush. You have to actually go into Google manually and see what is going on in here and ultimately get an idea of what you need to do. Let Google dictate your strategy. That is the key. You have to look at these search results manually. Okay, so what I did here is I actually just exported the search results from Ahrefs and threw them into a simple Google Sheet. And whenever I'm analyzing competitors, I do this in two phases. The first phase is going to be quantitative analysis. And all that means is just a fancy word for looking at the data and getting a an idea of what we need to do to match the competitors. And then the second part of this, which I'll show you in a second, is the qualitative analysis. And what that means is I'm literally going to open up all these competitors. I'm going to look at them and say, okay, what are they doing really well? And what are they not doing so well? What are the gaps that I can take advantage of to ultimately beat them? Okay. Because at the end of the day, SEO is a competition. And our goal is to simply do is to do better than the competitors by creating an asset that's different and better than what already exists. Okay. And so when I'm going to be analyzing these competitors, you're going to see here in a second, I'm looking for weaknesses that I can take advantage of to beat them. Okay. This is a competition. The goal is to beat them. So we must find their weaknesses. And sometimes I'll do a qualitative analysis of these competitors and find out that it's hard to find a unique angle. It's hard to find any weaknesses. And that's usually an indication that maybe you should move on to another keyword because it's going to be so difficult to beat their content that it's ultimately not even going to be worth the investment. So in this case though, that is definitely not the case. So first let's start with the quantitative side of this process, which is just looking at the data. And what I like to do is I just like to look, I don't even want to look at the page, right? I just want to look at, look at what I'm seeing at a very high level. And at a high level here, you're going to see a few things. So in this title category, this is the exact title that this page is using or that these pages are using. And we can see that the first five results here have the exact keyword phrase in the title. So clear indication that this is very important that we get the, the exact keyword in the title. And so I highlighted this in red because there's no point of leverage here. Okay. We're not going to be able to do anything better than what they're already doing as far as placing the keyword in the title tag, a very simple thing, but you can tell that we have four other results that are ranking without even placing the primary keyword in the title. Okay. So this is a point of leverage and just doing this alone, you're already going to be better than these four competitors. We're not even talking about the content yet. Just 
placing the exact keyword in the title. That is it, it's that simple. Now, that's the first part. The next part is we wanna look, is the keyword the exact keyword placed in the URL? Now, I'm you know borderline psychotic about this, but I think that you should place the exact keyword in the URL. It's just the way I like to do things because I wanna make sure that I can actually mark it off the list and know, okay, I've optimized this perfectly, okay? And I don't have to wonder, well, should I change the URL or is this not optimized so perfectly? I don't ever want to I don't ever want to guess. I don't ever want to wonder. So, the way that masterclass has set this up is exactly the way that I would personally optimize it. I would have keyword in the title, keyword in the URL. So, there's no point of leverage here because they've done this perfectly looking at this. But these other guys, not so much, okay? WikiHow, they have sprint faster, so they have a part of it. So, all these that I highlighted in orange, this just means that they have a part of the keyword in the actual URL. So they're doing decently, but they're not doing great. And then looking at this one here, how to run faster, okay? How to run faster and how to sprint faster are two different things, okay? Because technically running could also apply to long distance running, and it could also apply to just medium endurance running. It could apply to all different types of running, okay? So, but in this specific instance, we're looking at sprinting faster. So I highlighted this one in green because I know I can beat them because they're not as relevant as I can be, okay? So this is a good sign. These other ones, you know, they're not gonna be losing too many points by not having it because they have parts of it, but even the URL structure of some of these guys is not super great. You know, we still have all these filler words in the, in the URL, so it's not a perfect structure, but it's not gonna hurt them too badly. Next thing I wanna look at is the referring domains. Okay, so we'll go ahead and zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. Referring domains is a really important part, okay? And when we look at this, I just wanna see that there aren't a ton of, of the top results with tons of linking root domains going to the URL itself. And in this case, it's actually a really good sign. If we look at this, we'll go ahead and add a filter here so you can see, but we'll do Z to A, and it looks like there's only about two results that have more than 30 referring domains. And more than 30, it gets pretty costly to start to rank. But based on this, we really have most of the results that have less than 10 referring domains. So this is a really good opportunity, like a really good one, because we know the investment on the link building side is not gonna be huge, actually driving links to this specific page. So very good sign here. But this is the next part that I was talking about as far as KD. When we're looking at KD on Ahrefs here, the, you know, this is saying you need about five linking root domains to rank, okay? That's partially true, but it's not the whole story, okay? Because when we look at this, yeah, you could get five linking root domains going to your page, but you're probably still not going to rank if you don't have the domain rating, the overall strength to rank, okay? And this is where it gets interesting because you could theoretically get the exact amount of referring domains to your page, but still not rank if you don't have any website authority. So this is a perfect example when we look at this Athletes Forge, okay? They have 12 referring domains, but they have a domain rating of four. They're ranking number seven, all right? And so when I look at this, what I wanna see is, are there websites ranking that are weak, okay? And I wanna see overall. So are there any weak websites that are ranking what I would what would seem to be in an abnormal position? And this is a very good example, okay? This is a, a not a super weak website, it, it's pretty average, but it's weak enough to know that I can beat them, okay? If I have a decently strong website or even in the same range, we know we can beat them because they're ranking with a relatively average domain rating and they don't have a ton of links going to the specific page either. So to me, this is very exciting because basically it tells me that we can definitely get into this number four spot, like no doubt about it, just based on the quantitative analysis, not even looking at the content itself, just looking at the, the data, it's pretty obvious that we can sneak into this number four spot. And the reason why this skips number three is because number three, according to Ahrefs, is the YouTube video pack. So this is technically the number four spot. So this is a really good sign. I'd be very excited about this. And then I'm also really excited about these guys who are ranking here as well. So they're ranking number seven. Once again, you know, they have, they have a decent amount of referring domains going to the page, but their domain rating is a four. I mean, it's virtually nothing. So this will be very easy to beat. So it, 
it would be embarrassing if we couldn't get to number seven. I mean, this should be really easy to get to number seven. And then lastly, the number 10 spot, there's just no reason we shouldn't be able to beat number 10. They have a low domain rating. Their, their site is not very strong. They don't have links going to the specific page and they're not even really optimized for the target keyword. So there's just really no excuse to not beat these guys with a decent page. All right, so this is the beauty of just looking at this on a quantitative basis. You don't even need to look at the content. You can just look at this and find opportunity just by looking at the numbers. And this is the exciting part here. The real magic happens when we dive into the pages and then when I really start to see how I'm gonna be able to beat these guys. But this is the first part where you can really dive in. And then the last part of the quantitative analysis is actually to use a tool like Surfer. And the beauty of Surfer is that we can actually go really granular and start to look at how these pages are optimized before we've even opened up the pages themselves. So for example, when you go into Surfer and you go in the SERP analyzer, you can export all of this data. And so I basically just exported the ones that I think are important. Now, once again, we're looking at the top 10 or so, and I just wanna see a few things. So keyword in the title, we already know that the top guys have that. Then is there a keyword in the meta description? Now, meta descriptions don't matter a ton these days because Google will, will rewrite them. But still, once again, going back to the idea that we wanna check things off the list to make sure that we've done them, this is one where I would just make sure that I've done it so that I, I can sleep at night knowing that I've actually done the basics. Okay, so we look at this, it's actually really interesting We'll open up this number three result and we'll actually open up the number one result as well. And using the detailed Chrome extension, once this loads, we'll go ahead and actually open this up and you'll see, so they don't even have a meta description at all. Okay, so this is not ideal. They, they definitely should have a meta description, even if Google will likely rewrite it. It doesn't make a difference, we should still put it in there. So we can beat them on this front, that's a very good sign. And then we'll look at the number one result and we'll see that they actually do have a meta description, but the problem is they don't actually use the primary keyword, how to sprint faster in the actual meta description. So what I would do is I would, I would put the exact keyword phrase in a very natural form in this meta description, just to make sure that I get it in there. So we wanna have it in the title, we wanna have it in the description, we wanna have it in the URL, and then most importantly, we wanna have it in the first H1 possibly in the first stage two, and then of course, maybe a couple times throughout the page. That's like bare minimum on-page SEO. But believe it or not, a lot of web websites don't do that. So you can win just by doing very basic on-page SEO in many cases. So looking at this, we have you know all of these results, none of them have the keyword in the meta description. So right away, this is an opportunity. So I highlight green as opportunity. This one here is interesting too. This is how many keywords and actual body of the content itself. Like how many times did they mention the exact phrase, how to sprint faster. And so this actually, this number two result doesn't actually mention it at all. Okay. And that's a really good sign. And then these other ones, there's, there's multiple. Okay. But what we would not want to see is pretty much every competitor that's perfectly optimized. Okay. Because that gives us less margin of error. All right, and this in this case, it's gonna be pretty rare where you're gonna see that, but in really competitive verticals or competitive keywords, almost all the top results will be optimized very, very well. So, but in this case, that's definitely not what we're seeing. The next one here is just pure word count. So looking at this, 1200 words, 4,500 words, you know, all over a thousand in the top three, so that's good. But then these, these guys here, we got three results that are all below a thousand words. So just no reason that we shouldn't be able to jump in here at the only 400 words ranking. Okay, that's a very good sign. Next one is the total referring domains, which you already know is not a ton. This is surfers metric. It's not as accurate as hrefs. So take it with a grain of salt. Looking at this, this is how many in this column is how many, how many keywords are using the strong tag or are bolded in the copy itself. So this one's pretty interesting because no one has bolded the actual keyword in the body, but these guys, I think mainly by accident did it. I don't think it was intentional, but if we go down here, you'll see that they, did a summary of the the actual content here so how to sprint faster number one they they highlighted the steps and they you know this just maybe by accident was bolded maybe not by accident i don't know but they did actually bold it now does bolding matter probably not but if you're trying to get the most bang for your buck you could just highlight and put a strong tag around the core keyword in the first sentence 
you know, it's not going to hurt you, but I don't know if it's going to benefit you a ton. But once again, it could be something that you just kind of mark off the list. Then look up here. This is how many times is the keyword actually mentioned in the paragraphs, in paragraph tags. Once again, tons of opportunity. Most of these pages aren't even mentioning the core keyword, which is definitely not ideal. Next one here is the is the primary keyword in the H1 tag. Once again, tons of opportunity. Most, what, most pages are not doing it. Is it mentioned in the H2? Once again, most are not doing it. And then is the keyword mentioned above the fold? Very, very important. The number two result is not above the fold, which is very fascinating. And if we look at this, we'll open it up and we'll see just to prove that it's not how to sprint faster. And you can tell that the only thing that's above the fold is the actual H1 tag. So they don't even mention it here in the first paragraph, which is a mistake. It should be mentioned here in the first sentence to really optimize this page. So honestly, they could probably beat the, the next person above them if they just did some of these basic things. So that's one thing we wanna look at is make sure that it's above the fold. And the thing is, we're gonna be doing these things no matter what. If we're doing proper SEO, we're doing it the way we should, we're gonna be handling all these, but it's more of just to see the opportunity that exists for us, okay? And we clearly, when we have uh, six competitors who don't even have the primary keyword above the fold, there's just no reason we shouldn't be able to perform well in this. This is very exciting. And this isn't even looking at the content. Next one is just you, a keyword in the URL, which we know most do not have that. And then the next one here is overall structured data. Structured data is definitely important, but I think some people go a little overboard. There's one result here that has like 13 instances of structured data. I don't think that's gonna be hugely beneficial. And even just looking at the data, we can see that the top result only has one instance of structured data. So we'll go and take a look and we'll see when we open up the little tool here, we'll see that they just have the organization markup on this, this article. So this is not even marked up at all. This is just a site-wide schema markup and they didn't even mark this up for article. So this is just kind of another example showing that schema markup doesn't really influence rankings a whole lot. I think it's definitely overblown in many cases, but once again, it's not something that should be ignored. But if we look at this, you know, some some do have schema markup, but two two out of the top three results barely have any schema markup at all. All right, so it shows you it's not super influential in our rankings. And then this is the overall score that Surfer gives you as far as your content score, your on-page SEO score basically. Most have scored below 70. So for us, if it's below 70, that's a good opportunity. Top two are 75, all right? So good opportunity here to sneak in. And then the last part, which is really important, and I'll be looking at this on a qualitative basis, but looking at the quantity of images on the page. And I personally believe there's a there's a correlation between how media rich your content is and how well it will perform from a user experience perspective, from how many people link to it. I think it's just makes the content better overall. When your content's better overall, it performs better with users and with people who wanna to link to it, and then that leads to getting better rankings. So when I see that there's a low image count, to me, that's a really good sign that I can create something that's really visually rich that's gonna be way better than the competitors. So looking at this, tons of opportunity. We only have a few competitors who have a decent amount of images, but about six of these competitors have virtually no images at all. So when we do the qualitative analysis, we're gonna be able to see this with our own eyes. Now let's do that. Let's jump right into the qualitative analysis now. All right, so now we're gonna do the qualitative analysis. And really what that means is we're just gonna look at this and I'm going to, from a subjective point of view, give my opinion about the strengths and the weaknesses of these ranking assets or these ranking competitors. So ultimately what I'm trying to do here is I'm just looking for opportunities to win, okay? And so if there are certain trends and certain things that are clearly working, I wanna take advantage of those, but I also wanna look for things that they're not doing super well. So let's look at this first result here. It's already doing some good things, which I think is something that should be modeled, which is they have the content actually above the fold, which is good but then it is getting pushed down with this image. And then of course, another block here, that's a call to action, which is, I, I think personally, is a little too high up in the content because now if we're trying to satisfy the intent of this keyword and we're really focused on 
delivering the best value for the searcher, this is not going to benefit them at all. This is not this is not going to benefit the searcher and this is not going to satisfy the intent. So, I would move this CTA lower if this was my content. Because now because of that block, it takes us forever to finally get to the content. Okay? Now we're finally here. So, let's look at this and overall pretty blocky, pretty huge blocks of text, not super easy to read. And so right away, I see a huge opportunity. There's this is not a super well developed asset and what we can do is we would create an asset that leverages the the concept of the list post i think list posts is pretty much always applicable and always good but the problem here is that this is just not well formatted and it's very difficult to read and there's also no visuals there's no media there's not really a whole lot at all so the fact that this is ranking number one is really exciting because this content is easy to beat just by making it more visually rich. And so this is a great opportunity and I'd be really excited about this. So now this is the second ranking result and it's much better, much more visually rich, showing real life examples and videos of how to actually demonstrate what they're explaining. And so this is actually a really great piece of content. And if we go down, continual stuff to break up the patterns. And yeah, this is a very legit piece of content. This is very, very good. So I would say that this one definitely deserves to rank overall. I think this is going to be a difficult one to, to beat overall, but this is also a, a very good model for what works, but ultimately a good model for what a good piece of content looks for this keyword. So if I was if Google could subjectively pick the rankings, I would definitely pick this page over this one because it's clearly better and more valuable for the searcher. Now we're onto this one. And once again, this is this huge image here might be nice for the design, but it's actually bad for user experience because now it's pushing the content way below the fold. So this content, this whole block right here needs to be moved up above the fold. So this should be restructured to make that happen ultimately so you can satisfy the intent better. Now going through here, once again, this is similar to the masterclass one. There's just a call to action that's way too early, way too early on this because this is just, people are gonna click off, it's gonna kill user experience, it's gonna kill the, the positive user signals that you need on this page. So you don't wanna, you wanna have CTAs too high like this because you haven't even, you haven't even delivered on what the searcher came for. The searcher came to learn about how to sprint faster. So this is taking away from that. Go back through here and this is really random. You have just like a random Instagram post here. Not sure what that's all about. And then going through here, another Instagram post. Yeah, so not exactly the, the most in-depth or well-developed piece of content. So once again, another good opportunity. So really out of the top three, one of them is good and the other two can be beat pretty easily. Next one here is from Livestrong, which is a very well-known website. And we'll look through theirs and we'll see, once again, another huge thing above the fold here called the action. And then this one is pretty rough. Pretty rough. So this is what happens when a website gets so strong and authoritative. What tends to happen is that as a website gets stronger, their content quality decreases because they don't need to have exceptional quality content to rank anymore. And so this is the the downside of it's almost the curse of success in SEO when you when you start to actually become successful because of your content the content quality starts to fall because then you focus on hitting editorial publishing cadences instead of actually investing in content, trying to make it the best that it can be. And so based on the, the authority of this website, that's really the only reason why this is ranking. If you took this same exact content and you published it on a brand new website, it wouldn't perform at all. This would not rank because it's just not deep. It doesn't have any visuals. It doesn't explain anything super well. Don't even know who the author is really, who even wrote this content, why they're qualified to even write about how to sprint faster. So variety of things going on here that are, are not ideal, but if we're someone who's trying to rank here, we should get excited, okay? This is very, very good. Now, number five, go down here and we'll see. Uh, this one's gated, <laughs> so. Yeah, that we can just skip right past this one. And then we'll look at Athletes Forge, this one here. 
This one is interesting. You can tell that this one was actually written by someone who's legitimate. It's not the the best design. It's not exactly super readable in ways, but you can tell that this this has depth to it. There's actual real content here, real expertise here, just by briefly scanning over it. So this is one that you would definitely want to take some bits and pieces from and see you know the good things that they're doing. But I would say out of all of these so far, this one is actually probably the second best as far as depth of content. Design is not super great, but if this was my page and I wanted to improve it, I would just really upgrade the design because I, I know that I have the depth, I know I have the expertise, but I just need to focus on the design and user experience on this page. Next one here, we'll scroll down. And this one is similar to the other ones, not super deep. Next one here, three scientific proven ways to sprint faster. We'll take a look at this one, strength training, plyos, practice, and final thoughts. Okay, so once again, not gonna, not gonna blow your mind on this one, not super deep. And then the final one here, which is how to run faster. We already know this one is a little odd. It's not exactly how to sprint faster. It's more about running in general. So not exactly the one that we would want to model in general. So based on all of this, we really only have about two competitors that are really doing things pretty well. I would say WikiHow is by far the best page is, is like overall, it has good content. It has great visuals, great videos. Overall, this is a very good page and it's really going to help satisfy the intent and ultimately help the searcher get what they came for, right? They came here to learn how to sprint faster. They're getting mostly everything that they would need to accomplish that goal. So this is great. And it's, it's a really good how-to and a complete guide. So it's really satisfying the intent. Now, the other one that is also doing well is this one here, Athletes Forge. This is another great piece of content. Like I said, it just needs a little bit of refinement, but this, this is very good. So Ultimately, we have about two competitors that we can certainly pull things from, but this is what you have to do when you're trying to rank. You have to analyze these competitors and dig in and really make sure that this is gonna be a good keyword to target. And now based on this, looking at the competitors, this is a very good keyword to target because there's no one that's really blowing any minds with the content that's ranking here, except for one that's very, very good. But you know, we're looking at this as a whole, not just one. And now the good thing about ranking in Google is that it's not a zero sum game. So WikiHow can rank, but we can also rank and we can also get organic traffic. So this is this is the beauty of it. So there's definitely room for us to jump into this. So this is what you need to do for every single keyword. Analyze the competitors, look for strengths, look for weaknesses. So then from there, you're gonna develop your content strategy. Okay, so now it's time to develop an SEO content strategy based on what we've seen from the competitors. And so Ultimately, you don't need to overthink this, but really the, the key to being successful on any keyword, especially if it has relatively decent competition, is just to come up with a unique angle that hasn't been used before. And so you can do that while continuing to satisfy the intent. So if we look at every single website or page that is ranking here, every single one of them is basically just a guide or how-to type of posts. And that's okay, that's clearly what works here. But we can create and how to article, but we can add a twist to it to make it unique. And when you add a twist, that will actually make it better for you once you're ranking because then you'll increase your organic CTR. You want to be a purple cow among these top 10. And so the concept of the purple cow is from Seth Godin, but basically it means that if you're looking at a field of a bunch of different cows and there's one purple cow there, it's really gonna stand out compared to just a whole field of cows. And that's what you want when you're trying to rank in Google. And so looking at these, we know that two of these competitors have good articles. We know this one's good, we know this one's good. But what I did is I came up with a concept that no one else has done so far because no one else has brought other people on to explain how to sprint faster. All of these recommendations and various things are from people who aren't super well known. They do not have any brand recognition. They don't have any real high level expertise. So what we would want to do is we want to find people who are highly qualified to talk about how to sprint faster. So I came up with a few different ones. It could be how to sprint faster in 2022 according to scientists or pro athletes or Olympians, or even this one, just to leverage Usain Bolt in the actual 
title tag here and then talk about his secrets. And here's the cool part is I don't need to go and interview Usain Bolt to build this content. I can just analyze Usain Bolt and his sprinting technique and then explain what those secrets are of what he's doing or what he does that's different than everyone else, okay? And so we're using different different types of leveraging other people's names, name jacking to ultimately drive more clicks and more visibility and more interest in this content. Because at the end of the day, some of this stuff is a little boring, right? I mean, seven steps, eight expert tips with pictures, and it's not super exciting. So if we add a little spice to it, we add a little, if a little flavor to this, this kind of worn out topic, it's gonna drive more interest and ultimately help us rank longer. And that's what we should go for. So when I'm thinking about my, my SEO content strategy, and this doesn't matter whether it's an informational piece of content, it's a transactional page, it doesn't make a difference. No matter what keyword I'm going after, I wanna think about how can I make this page different than what's currently ranking so I can build a moat around this content. And what that means is ultimately we want to rank, we wanna be able to rank for the long term. We don't want to create something that's so easy to beat that a competitor can just throw up a page today and just wipe us off. We want it to be so difficult to beat that they're going to look at our page and be like, whoa, they put a lot of time into this. They put a lot of capital into this. And so we're just not going to try to uh, outrank them ultimately. So that's really what we want. That's how we build that SEO content boat. Okay. So once you've developed your SEO content strategy, now what you need to do is think about how you're going to build topical authority. And so what I like to do is I'll, I will just go right into Ahrefs and pull ideas from here, but you can also go to answer the public or you can go to alsoask.com. doesn't really matter what method you use, but at the end of the day, we need to find additional ideas to support our primary idea. So if we look at this, the primary topic we're going after is how to sprint faster. And then what we did is we found a bunch of different ideas that are considered secondary keywords. And so how to sprint faster in basketball or soccer or track or any type of sport, these are all additional ideas. Now, is sprinting faster gonna be different depending on the sport? Not necessarily, but still there may be some nuances for each of these. So these may require a separate asset. Then we start to look at some of these other ones. There's also questions, okay? Does losing weight make you sprint faster? Okay, this is a very specific question and it is not specific to the primary topic. It, you could theoretically answer this question on here, but more than likely, you won't rank. And we can prove this just by copying this topic and going into Google, and we'll see that we're probably gonna see a whole different set of results compared to the previous one. So looking at this, right away we see a whole different set. These are not the results that were ranking before for the broader topic of how to sprint faster. So whenever you see a difference or you see variance between two different keywords, it's usually Google telling you that you need to create a separate page or a separate asset. So if I was targeting this, I would create a separate piece of content around this specific topic. Does losing weight make you sprint faster? And I would create an appropriate word count for that. And then of course, once you create that asset, you wanna internally link back to the primary asset and vice versa. You could link from the primary to the secondary, the secondary to the primary. It's okay to link them together. And so you wanna keep doing that. You wanna build out as many of these assets as it makes sense. And so typically whenever we create an asset, we're gonna be trying to create at least five to 10 supporting assets for that one asset, if that makes sense. But the key is to remember that you're only creating a new asset when the intent is different and when Google is showing a different set of results. So just use Google as your guide. And then we'll look through here, is it illegal to sprint faster than the speed limit? Uh, I'm actually interested to see the answer to this myself, uh, but we'll go ahead and take a look. And once again, totally different set of results, okay? So this is, this is another example where we would need to create a separate asset. So the point is pretty clear here. Create as many supporting assets as you need to rank. And so of course you could go crazy and create an asset for all of these if, if appropriate, but it could also be overkill. So you have to kind of weigh the pros and the cons of creating more assets. But if your goal is to be the, the authority and the dominant force for how to sprint faster, then you should absolutely max out every content opportunity that exists. And then once you've built out all these assets, all that's left to do is just start acquiring links to the primary asset and to the secondary assets. And if you've internally linked them well, you're gonna drive authority to all of these different, these different pages 
and a rising tide will lift all ships. So all of these posts will perform better. All of these keywords will perform better because you've built a really strong cluster and a, a really strong cluster of authority around this one core topic. So that's how you rank for how to sprint faster. So if you got a lot of value from this video and you want me to actually show you how to rank for a specific keyword, then just drop it below and I'll create a dedicated video to show you how to rank for whatever keyword you wanna go after. So once again, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe, hit the bell notification, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.